So my aim here is to get you to set up your camera, some quick lights, and do a quick render. So I'm going to look at my camera, look through there and see, yep, it's all lined up. If it isn't, push the letter N um, and then view, lock camera to view. And then you can move it around if you want to zoom in, maybe make it closer. So something like that's a good idea. Remember to untick that so when you move out, the camera stays where it was. I will look from the top and I'm going to add in a path for the camera to follow. So I'm gonna click add or shift A, go to curve circle, don't go mesh circle, that's wrong. Curve circle. And that is added here because the 3D cursor is in the origin. It doesn't just default add where the origin is, it's where the 3D cursor is. I'll push S for scale and then pull my mouse out and I'm gonna drop that when the point of the camera and the circle approximately line up. So down here is where I'm looking. They won't be the right height. So when I look at the different height here, we'll see. I'll push N to get that menu out of the way. It's not the right height. So I'm going to look from the side and I need to pull that up. G for grab, Z to constrain in the Z axis and bring it up and then click. Click the camera first. So that's really important that the camera is highlighted first. Shift click the circle and then Control and P together and choose Follow Path. And if I hit a space bar, that does the animation and it goes around for 100 frames. It stops there, but the playhead you'll notice keeps going because the playhead's end is at frame 250 and then it goes back to one again. So I'm gonna change the end from 250 to 100 and I'll push Enter and it's just gonna keep replaying now. So that's essentially looking through the camera or well, the camera from the outside. If we look through the camera, we can kind of see and testing on screen that it's not chopping off anything. There's no ears or mouth or something missing. So that's really important. So that's the first thing. Second thing we want to do is check the lights. That There's only got one light there. That's not enough. So we'll stick in some more. So that's a light. Um, a really simple way to do that would be Shift D and I'll stick one over there and Shift D and I'll stick one over there. And another thing that can be quite helpful, particularly with cycles rather than EV, is the bounce lighting. So I'll put in a ground, shift A, mesh, plane, scale at, and I type five, zero, push return, and there's my ground. My big problem there is what? What is it? My ground Chop is off chopping off half the head. Thank you very much. So what I do, sometimes I look from the bottom, and then I go GZ, and then I can say, right, that's low enough. You know, like if it had legs or something, my animal, but I'll just give it a bit of space there. Um, it gives it something to look at. So again, looking through the camera and then space and it starts to play. That's kind of boring because there's no color on that monkey head. I'll click down here and new and I'll make that monkey yellow. So we've got a yellow monkey um, and then I might change the ground new and then I'll make this a really pale blue. So I'll go over here in the blue, but um, I need to bring it close to the center. So. Um, I can right click that in there and go shade smooth if I want to, I think. Pause, tab, shade smooth. There we go. So it looks a little bit smoother. It hasn't actually done much to it. Um, we're pretty close to ready to render now. So coming up to this one here that looks like a camera or the back of a fancy looking camera, render engine. Eevee's fast, cycles is better but slow. So I'm going to choose Eevee, otherwise we're going to be here all day. The next thing I'm going to do is choose where it saves to. This icon here that's supposed to look like a printer, output properties, I have to change where does it go to. Output is where I'm going, so if that's uh, closed, just click output. This folder is not where I want my work to go to. I'm going to open for demonstration purposes and trying to save time. This one is render example. And I push enter, make sure it's actually in there and it isn't. So I have to go back to there and then render example, double click and make sure it's in there and accept and then check that. That's a really important thing to do is to check. The next thing is the color RGB is red, green, blue. This one RGBA, the A stands for alpha transparency. Since nothing's transparent, there's no point having that extra data. So I'm going to RGB. I'm going to do this render in... EV just because it's fast, it's now ready to go in frame 100. I now have to just go render, render animation. If I go render image, it's going to render the image that I'm on and that would be frame 22. But if I go render animation, I click it, 
and I'll speed this up in post-production later on, but you'll see here frame three, four, five, etc. cetera, um, and it's taking 1.2 approximately seconds per frame. Nice and fast, um, and then the job will be done in a few minutes. That's No seven, 98, 99, 100, it's all done. So I can close that part. And there should be 100 frames saved in this folder. If I go to that output, it's on my desktop, they should be there. Pop up not happening, there we go. So I'll just go right click, quit, and then don't save. And Premiere Pro. So in Premiere Pro, I'm gonna go new project. I never leave it called untitled. This is just going to be um, uh, example to join um, frames together. I have to remember not to type too hard because it sounds like I'm thumping when I'm recording with the same microphone. And then go, uh, where's that going to be? That's 10 DTE, so that's you guys. That's a good place for it to go. Okay. All right, I need to bring the frames in. So this part, I'm in the editing. You could go into assembly. It won't make a lot of difference. It's still that same part, editing or assembly. Um, and I need to bring it in. So assembly, I double click to import media. You can drag and drop. That's from the other day. I'm going to go to the desktop. And I had render example here. And we can see, well, that's reverse order by name. So if I go and click that, I've got frame one. Now on a Mac, it says options, and I have to click image sequence. On a PC, it doesn't have that. It's just got, you can see image sequence. So that's just up to you. I tick image sequence, and I go import. And because this is local on my machine, there's no lag. If you're using OneDrive and it has to download those frames, uh, there'll be a lot of lag. Another thing I often do is... I untick the image sequence and I bring in the first one, import. I hover my mouse over that one. Actually, that's done it as an image sequence. So it's made a mistake. One, untick image sequence, import. So if I hover over that one, it doesn't scrub back and forth, whereas this does scrub. Scrub is playing back and forth. Double click in here and I'm gonna go to the bottom and bring in 100 not as an image sequence and import that because sometimes what I do is I bring in the first frame and rather than being in the assembly layout I go to editing so if I double click this part you'll see it up here and I can kind of test um, parts out but this isn't in my um, my sequence yet I could also go to frame one not that one but this frame one here double click that there's a single frame I can drag from here and drop it in my timeline, and you'll see that's completely changed. If I zoom in that purple section, you'll see it's labeled 0001 PNG, and it plays for a fairly long period of time. It's like five seconds as the default. That's way too long. You can either hover over the edge and drag it in like that, or if it's your preference, you can right click and then choose speed duration and you can type in there and go right i want that to play for two seconds and then you go okay and then that's going to shorten right down to two seconds then one of the things that i often do is i try and find the one that is scrubbing i think it's that one no no it's quite irritating so there it is double click that hit play so that's the one that will play through that's the seek image sequence I'll drag that down and drop so what we'll see is two seconds where it doesn't move I think that should have been two seconds where it didn't move hit play that's gone straight into it move it across I think I didn't put two seconds I think I put 0.2 seconds All right play yeah. I think I've got that wrong. Let's have another look at that speed duration I put in there. Here, yeah. um, I didn't put two seconds, I put 0.2 seconds. So that's two seconds, I think. Yeah. 
So it'll sit there still for a couple seconds and then it'll start to play, get the number right, and then it'll get to the end and then that'll be the end of it. So what I would typically do is put this frame 100 over there, that will default to five seconds. So right click and then choose um, speed duration. And I might have that rather than five seconds, I'll change that five there to three or something like it and then go okay. I personally recommend making text in something better than what's built in here, but this text will do. So I can click type tool and then click here. And then I've got my monkey head. Obviously it's not my monkey head, I don't look like that. And then if you put it in the middle, it kind of blocks it. So you put it in some way sensible. Now I'm going to zoom out here on this play area. This is how long my text is going to appear for. My monkey head's still there and it's going to cut off about three, two, one, go, it disappears. So I think that's too long. So I'm going to bring this in so it doesn't go for quite so long. So the, the text is there and then not here. But it, if you notice, the text basically instantly disappears. There's no fade. So quite commonly we put in a fade. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I'm going to right click on the end. See how the uh, mouse changes to this red shape? Right click and apply default transition. Now this transition, um, you'll sort of see, I'll have to adjust the zoom again. That's the cross dissolve. So in this area here, you'll see it sort of fading. So I can change the length for how long that cross dissolve lasts for. Might drop it there. So it's solid and then it starts to dissolve away. So there's tons of things that you can do. Um, this is the sort of stuff that I think is a good start point as a first project. Last thing we need to do, I'm going to go to the very beginning. I'm going to mark an in point. So I push I for in and you'll see this gray area. There's also this button here, mark in. Take a wild guess. What do you think the key press for out is? Bingo. It's O for out. And the cool thing is the right next to each other in the on the keyboard, so you can put your fingers over it. That's really common to mark in and out points. So I'm just going to push O for out. So when it makes a video, it's going to make a video that's this long. My next job is to go and export file, export media. What you need to change is you go to format first. There's a big long list. Go to the one that says H.264. Mine already says that because I've used it in the past. Preset. You can use match source. One of the things I like to do sometimes is scroll down and just go YouTube 1080p full HD. That's extremely common and it plays on most uh, formats. The bit that I would like Adobe to change says output name. That's fine, but it's also the place where I change where it goes to. So I'm going to click that and rather than put it on my desktop, I should, if I'm sensible, go to OneDrive. And since I'm teaching 10 DTE, it's going to go in here. So this is monkey head. Oops. Monkey will do. I'm just checking it's in the right place. Yeah. M O N K E Y. Save. So that's its name and its location is all sorted. The next thing I can do, if I had to keep doing a whole lot of extra work, I might queue the job for later, but I'm just going to go export. This is not taking long, seconds and it's done. That's now made into a movie. I have to go find that movie to play it back. So I'm going to go to 10DTE and I'll sort by date modified and it should come to the top. There's my monkey. And there's my monkey head and I can now hit play. And it, there it is, it spins around. And then it's got a pause at the end. So a nice quick little project, one that's not too complicated, but it definitely teaches you a bunch of techniques um, and the, the, the bar's not too high for a first project to do, okay? So that's essentially what I want you to aim for. Um, I will have this video up on YouTube as soon as I can. Um, and if you have any questions, please ask.